The Gospel of Thomas is probably the most famous non-canonical gospel. Everyone seems to know a little bit about it. They'll ask questions like, why is the Gospel of Thomas not in the New Testament? Or did you know the Gospel of Thomas might be an independent source to the sayings of Jesus? But what does the Gospel of Thomas really say, and why isn't it in the Bible? The Gospel of Thomas is preserved in its entirety in a single Coptic text from the Nan Hammadi Library, a horde of early Christian texts discovered in the mid-20th century. It appears in a few Greek fragments, too. The Coptic manuscript dates to the 4th century CE, but it's probably a copy of an earlier Greek version that dates to the 2nd century. But some scholars have even posited a late 1st century date. Dating Thomas is actually really difficult, because unlike the canonical Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospel of Thomas is a sayings gospel. It's comprised of 114 sayings of Jesus. No narratives, no sermons, just short sayings. So presumably editors could have added to the text throughout its composition. In fact, one scholar, April DeConnick, argues that the Gospel of Thomas underwent several layers of composition, starting as a kernel of Aramaic Jesus sayings in the mid-first century, all the way through to the second century with the version that we have today. Though not all scholars agree with Dr. DeConnick. To make things simple and to avoid this debate, let's just say that the Gospel of Thomas probably was composed in Greek, and dates probably between 135 CE and 200 CE, though with the added possibility that some sayings might date all the way back to the historical Jesus and some of them might have been in Aramaic. Now a lot of people think of the Gospel of Thomas as a Gnostic Gospel. In an earlier video I say why this assumption is a lot more complex than what you think. The Gospel of Thomas actually lacks a lot of Gnostic features. There is no mention of an evil demiurge, there is no mention of eons or archons like what we see in the Gospel of Judas. We just have a few sayings that sound esoteric and the fact that the Gospel was packaged with other Gnostic Gospels, like the Apocryphon of John. In actuality, a large portion of the Gospel of Thomas has parallels to the New Testament Gospels. However, these parallels are always a little bit different, which leads some scholars to believe that the Gospel of Thomas is an independent source to the sayings of Jesus. For example, Thomas verse 96 has close parallels to Matthew 13, 33. Jesus said, The kingdom of the Father is like a certain woman. She took a little leaven, concealed it in some dough, and made it into large loaves. Matthew, on the other other hand, reads, He said to them another parable, The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. So we obviously have parallel texts here, but there are enough differences between these two texts that make scholars think they are independent texts, maybe one of them more original than the other. But who's to say which one is more original? This question is actually really difficult to answer. Some scholars think that Thomas often contains the older version of these Jesus sayings because they're more simplistic than the canonical Gospels, which often have very embellished parables. A good counter-argument comes from Simon Gathercole in his huge commentary on the Gospel of Thomas. He argues that the Gospel of Thomas is not independent of the canonical Gospels, and in fact, whoever compiled Thomas was probably aware of the Synoptic Gospels. In Thomas verses 13, 14, and 44, there seems to be some influence on the Gospel of Matthew, and in Thomas verses 33, 65, and 104, there seems to be influence from the Gospel of Luke. Furthermore, he argues since the Gospel of Thomas dates to the second century and is far removed from Jesus' life, and since the Gospel of Thomas lacks specific details about first century Palestine, he concludes that it doesn't tell us much at all about the historical Jesus. As scholarship currently stands, and with the primary sources that are available to us at the present, the Gospel of Thomas can hardly be regarded as useful in the reconstruction of a historical picture of Jesus. So at this point in the debate, we should just admit, yeah, some of the sayings are very ancient, and some of them might date back to the historical Jesus himself. But the nature of our sources just don't let us know for sure, and very smart people are on both sides of the debate. So finally, let's tackle this question of why the Gospel of Thomas is not in the New Testament. Some people would say, well, since there's so much overlap between the Synoptic Gospels and the Gospel of Thomas, why is it not in the fold? It seems to belong there. Now, the canonization of the New Testament is extremely complex, but there are a few factors that we can consider to help answer this question. First of all, there seems to have been a lot of resistance to have any more Gospels than just four. We have evidence that the four Gospels circulated as 
as a collection very early on, even before the broader canon started to develop. For example, Papyrus 45 of the Chester Beatty Papyri contains the four Gospels and the Book of Acts, dating to about the 3rd century CE. So even while the Gospel of Thomas started to circulate, the four Gospel exclusive fan club was already starting to solidify. Moreover, there seems to have been a lot of resistance to Gospels of Thomas in general. Church authorities such as Hippolytus, Origen, Eusebius, Cyril, Didymus the Blind, Jerome, and Ambrose, all of these guys mention a Gospel of Thomas, and all of them say that they're forgeries made by heretics. Origen's quote is particularly striking. Also in circulation is the Gospel according to Thomas. These come from those who set their hands to it, but the Church of God approves for alone. Now we can't be for sure if these guys are talking about the Gospel of Thomas that we have today. After all, there were several books called Thomas. We have the Infancy Gospel of Thomas, and we have the Book of Thomas the Contender. But this is evidence that there was significant pushback against any Gospel named Thomas. So these are two factors to consider if anyone asks why the Gospel of Thomas is not in the Bible. The Four Gospel tradition was very early and very popular, and a lot of church authorities just rejected any Gospel of Thomas. But we should also consider that in many respects, the canonization of the New Testament was an organic process. It was wasn't all top-down decrees from church authorities. Certain books gained huge popular followings and circulated more widely. Matthew, for example, is known to be one of the more popular gospels of early Christianity. We found the remnants of about a dozen manuscripts of Matthew that date to the 2nd and 3rd century, and 16 of the Gospel of John, but only one Thomas manuscript, and even then this manuscript is from the 4th century. It appears Thomas was just not as popular as other gospels like Matthew, and therefore did not circulate as widely. Over Overall, the Gospel of Thomas is one of the greatest finds from the 20th century and has greatly contributed to our understanding of early Christian textual practices and early Christianity in general. At this point though, I would say go read it for yourself. It's not that long and you might learn something new. As always, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Now this video is the latest in my series, Varieties of Early Christianity, where I try to approach early Christianity from a different perspective. Not heretics versus orthodox Christians, but rather looking at Christianity as a complex web of competing and sometimes overlapping Christian communities. We've talked about topics like Marcion and the Gospel of Judas, but if you have any suggestions yourself, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll add them to the queue. And also special shout out to our patrons on Patreon who keep this channel afloat financially. You guys are a small and elite group and I'm so thankful for you. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.